Hello, everybody. This is Jeff Dalgleish. Um, first time I've been doing a Zoom presentation, so it's a little new for me, but I uh, hope you bear with any video glitches or audio that might be happening. Um, I'm, I'm super pleased to present today. This is uh, quite an opportunity, I think. The Gracken community has been one of those um, most active, or I guess not Gracken, the, the Vatical. I'm learning to the new words. Uh, the Vatical community has been really great, really, in terms of helping us learn what's going on. So just quickly, today I'm going to be talking about um, causal knowledge graphs. So it'll probably, I'll need to explain that, but give you a sort of a background about who I am and, and a little bit about who we are, just so you get some context for this presentation. My background, so I have a computer science degree, and then I ended up going and doing about 20 years uh, running Chevron's drilling and completion um, IT organization. So really all of the projects that we were doing. So I got to live data lakes and all of the problems big companies have. I did that for 20 years and really, really got to see up close and personal the types of problems major corporations are struggling with, especially when it comes to artificial intelligence and graphs. Um, when I saw graphs about five years ago, I ended up leaving Chevron and joining, an, joining another company that was doing work with graphs. Um, I spent five years there and there we basically built knowledge gra graphs for oil and gas. Um, a lot of work doing that. And this is when I ran into Stuart originally. He's the CEO of the company called Geminos. And at the time, we were really trying to grapple with understanding how, um, how the world can be represented in a knowledge graph. And then as time went by, causal science started to become something that was a bit more interesting. And Stuart had been focusing on that. So now we're, I'm with Geminos, and we're really trying to figure out how do we build artificial intelligence applications that come up with results that are a lot more explainable. That was always the problem. Industries wouldn't trust it. Um, so we, we started looking at causal science, Stuart did, and started doing some research into it. And what ended up happening was we, we pulled together a small group of people. We wanted to see, you know, could we take a set of existing tools and build an application that merges causal science with traditional data science? And I'll explain what causal science is in a second. Um, but that, that's kind of how we met. And then in, what was it? Probably December, actually it was around Christmas is when I was on the phone talking with Daniel and Thomas. They were actually teaching the Gracken classes at Gracken Academy that I attended. And I really got a feel for Gracken. So since then, we've, we've built something pretty interesting, I think. And you're going to see it for the first time today. We've basically started on a, a tool set that allows us to graphically lay out and draw knowledge graphs, um, those knowledge graphs can be then implemented in Gracken, but we've got a whole workflow engine around it that can push data in and run all the machine learning stuff. So this will make sense in a second, but just to start with the beginning, um, we have to give respect to the people that really started this whole thing, Judea Pearl. Um, he was re recently written a book called The Book of Why. And, but Judea Pearl, he's one of those people that we need to listen to. He basically is the person that created Bayesian belief propagation networks. Um, he is one of the giants in artificial intelligence. Um, and lately he's been talking a lot about um, understanding the current trend in data science, which looks a lot like data fitting. Um, there's a lot of data science projects that happen and they tend to fail. And we, we believe that a large part of this is because people aren't considering causation in their solutions. And cause, causation at a very basic level is something causes something to happen. Um, so his approach is you need to essentially build what he calls a directed acyclic graph, which when you're in the graph space, you need a place to store all this and reason across a graph. And this is where we looked and found type DB. And because of its reasoning strength and because of its expressive strength, especially with relationships being able to have the power that they do, the edges on the graph, we, we thought it was something to worth lo looking into. Um, so I'm gonna show you the solution, but to set it up, I wanna kind of give you an idea of a project we've actually been working on with a customer, a real customer with real clients um, it's a 3PL, which stands for third-party logistics. And a 3PL is a company that basically ships goods on behalf of other customers. So let's say you uh, are Nike or a rocket company or a boat company, 
So you want to ship products to your customers. So you'll use a 3PL to do that. And the question they had, which became sort of drove the whole effort is, why are my customers leaving? So with Pearl, his book's called The Book of Why, and it really is around understanding why things are happening um, in a system and being able to understand the causal effects of why things are happening. So to do that, we have to start thinking about data and things differently. We don't think about data. Data is a raw material that is used to create um, events, or it's a byproduct of an event happening. Something happens, it creates data. So in oil and gas, we drill a well, and the amount of data that comes out of drilling a well is massive, because all these things are happening. So in the 3PL world, you've got these events. Things happen. People reduce prices. They increase prices. Shipments work. There's problems with it. The customer complains about it, weather patterns. News comes out about a company. So you've got all these things that are happening in the world to these entities. So the entities are customers and carriers. So I want to be able to figure out using causality, I want to understand patterns of behavior over time. And I ideally, if we can start noticing similar patterns of behavior over time, are some of those behavior patterns sort of archetypes? So an example might be a bunch of customers try this 3PL for a few months and then they leave. Okay, well, that could be a cluster of behavior called a trial cl cluster. Um, another cl cluster might be people making too many claims or COVID having a negative impact on the company. So there's these different ways of looking at it. So we, we really tried to figure out how do we apply causal science to this solution? And in order to do so, the very first step in all of this is you know, you need to understand, and I'm going to show you this in a second, how we're doing it. Um, but you need to understand how to build a causal diagram. And this is totally against, I think, what most data scientists are doing right now. We're saying don't use data first. D data comes in later, but let's first start with understanding what's causing what in a diagram. So sit down with a subject matter expertise and ask them, what are the kinds of things that are happening? Um, in your world that are causing this behavior or leading to it. And then you, there's this formal process of modeling that out in a uh, directed acyclic graph that helps you understand what factors or what events are happening that are causing some outcome. Um, so I'm going to show you what we've done. So the first step is you're sitting down with a customer and you've got to model something. So you want to be able to have a tool and you don't want to be writing Grackle or not Grackle, but type DB syntax. You want to be modeling, right? So, so we took a tool called Node Red, and we've basically added some additional nodes to it with some underlying logic that allows us to do the modeling in this tool and then output the, uh, the, the TypeDB uh, schema. The other step is, well, Node Red is also something that can be used in its main uses um, Internet of Things application. If you have a Raspberry Pi, it's going to come pre-installed on your Raspberry Pi. But it's a tool that's really used for IoT type of applications. So it's really good at bringing data in, changing it, running workflows on it, and then doing stuff with it. So we're like, let's take that open source tool, combine it with, with uh, TypeDB, and see if we can in, get those two working together and actually being programming into it. Because um, a lot of causal science, you're building models, you're building these Bayesian, you're building a, maybe using an LSDM to understand things, or you're using a, a SHAP values to understand what's going on within those attributes. So you, you build your model, and then you assign probabilities to it, you build an underlying knowledge model that will support the causal model, you do your ETL, you build an e, a UI, and you deliver this to a customer. So we want to be able to enable companies to go through this process using a tool to build these types of solutions. So, so let me show you what this looks like. So I'm going to jump into the demo I have to find my glasses. I'm getting a little older here. It's my birthday today, so happy birthday to me. Um, yes, okay. So this is a causal model. Let me just give you a little tour of what we've done here. So this is node red. We're, we're basically, my mouse isn't, there you go. So it's a drawing tool. Um, I can start with a blank canvas and start dragging things on it if I wanted to. So like entities, relationships, rules, and attributes. But I'll start with this causal diagram. So this is a causal diagram, again, of why are my customers leaving? Well, a proxy for that is what's a customer relationship score? Can we come up with some function that calculates a customer relationship score, which also maybe calculates a churn probability calculation? So 
let's let's kind of explain what's going on here. So this is a graph. So I'm basically drawing out the logic. What are the causal? What are the events? So we've got this thing called an event, this little node. We can drag it onto the screen and drop it. We can double click on it and start changing properties. But so damages happen, um, or maybe they didn't get the full product they ordered. Maybe somebody missed a service level and a service level is just, you know, two, two people show up with gloves and deliver your television, install it is maybe a level five and they only showed up with one person. That might affect the shipment quality. Um, the staff might be overloaded. So these are the things you sit down with the expert and say, what are the causes of the shipment quality? What, what are the things that happen? Now, can we find data to back these things up? If we can, then we can then figure out what these probabilities are that go into how it affects this. So we can start training machine learning models to figure out what these numbers need to be. And that's where the shipment quality comes in. So we worked with a, I'm not sure if I can say the name of company or not. I think I can, um, I won't just to be safe, a very large technology provider that sells uh, technology to build models. Um, so you can, we built a model with them that can actually do these calculations. So within Node-RED, you can actually bring in some of these models. I can double click on this and it'll open up the palette that is related to it. So I can, it's, it's a Watson machine learning I'm using here. So I can basically set this up to run a prediction. I can pick the model that I've already deployed there. So let you know the, the model run on a server, but I can still orchestrate the flow here. Um, so this is kind of the idea. So now if all of these are events, so let's let's take the claim event. So the somebody makes a claim against our shipment. Well, this is where the integration with type DB needs to be made. So we needed to modify node red a little bit to be able to do things like this. So I want to be able to go in into this claim. Actually, let's pick a different example. I will, we'll stick with claim for now. So we, this is where the owns, relates, uh, plays, all of these attributes can be set up because all of this information in the graph is going to end up being in um, a file that we can then parse out and then create our type db schema from so we lay it out um, so in this one we're creating shipment quality uh, we create a customer relationship score and this is how these graphs work you basically sit down with an sme figure out what are the attributes that are affecting them and you start bringing these into functions, machine learning functions that can calculate these variables you're trying to build off of. But we also want to be able to build UIs. So fortunately, you can wire in to this diagram these different UI elements. So now this is basically the elements that we need in a dashboard. So we might want to say, I want to be able to select a customer, see what their score is, and see all of these factors that are contributing to it. And those can be done with charts. So that's kind of the first step. That's the causal model. That's how you go and build these causal models of why things are happening. So a couple of things are important. Um, so underneath this causal model, there needs to exist a knowledge model that represents how we want to store everything. So I'm going to jump to this uh, knowledge model. So this is more traditional, what you've used to seeing entities and events or relationships. But one of the things we're adding to it. So here's the domain. We've got a 3PL. We've got customers. Um, airports, carriers are the people that move it, and maybe a salesperson who sets up the shipment. So shipment happens. So shipments are major object. If I double click on that, you can now see all of these different things that we've set up. So it owns a house airway bill number. It relates a salesperson, customer, airport, carrier, then all these event things. So it's important in our system, an event is described by a set of things that allow us to track what happened at what time, at what location, all of these events. So we can order things in time and we can build a knowledge graph around events. Um, so that, that's what, so we're, we're, we're translating these events into relationships and, or we could translate them into entities. It depends on what you want to do, but in this case, I'm keeping it simple. I'm calling all of these relationships or all of these relationships. And over on the entity side, like open customer, for example, so typically, so using the new nomen nomenclature, we're putting shipment colon customer. So this is how we set up these plays relationships now. So this is really the, the, the structure of it. Um, and so this is, you know, if I wanted to add something to it, let's say I wanted to add a new, uh, oh, I don't know, a new entity. I can just drag it in. Let's say I want to create a new entity called, uh, oh, what would be a good one? Truck. Double click on it. So I can give it a name, truck. And I can start assigning what kinds of things I want to have on it. And owns maybe a license plate. 
number, all of these different things. So I can start adding these entities to it. Now, later when I deploy this, all of these entities, um, this actually runs as a model of microservice. Each one of these things can be run as a microservice as we're running through this. But if I click on deploy, it's gonna go and deploy that information and build the, the type DB schema. Now we don't have the newest version of type DB integrated with this. We've wrote it against 1.8. So we're just in the process of changing it. Um, you can see the interface has changed now that we're using the correct terminology. Um, but that's really how we're, we're getting into this. So the, the other bit of this is how do we get data into these systems? This is another tricky bit. So we can create schema, we can model schema, we can model causal diagrams. We can have the compute behind these causal diagrams show up. Actually, I wanna show you the integration, this is important. So customer, customer is the person who's paying for all this, these shipments. Well, in the customer, we have this thing called owns and they own a customer relationship score and a turn probability. Well, that information doesn't exist in the data. We can't parse that from a text file. That's over in this. So the churn model, if I double click on the churn model, it's gonna bring up, if I edit the subflow template, it's gonna bring up that churn model. So you start with your, you know, you start with building a churn model to figure out what you wanna answer. Then you build this uh, causal model to underpin the uh, churn model. And you're able to go into this churn model and this is where the actual computation is going to, it's really a compute plan for figuring out how you calculate customer relationships or churn probability. And the types of tools you're able to use in here are things like shipment, uh, sorry, you're, you're able to use any model. You can put a model into here. Um, let's say you wanted to use an AWS function. So this is the node red power is you can start stringing in all of these different functions. I could even just go and put in um, Python functions in here. So if I wanted to run some Python functions in this node to, to do things, actually I'll show you an example of that. So if I go back to this knowledge model here, I've got my causal diagram, my entities, my relationships, but I've also got this ETL logic and you can see these dotted arrows. So they've given us a bunch of text files. We need to parse those and create our entities and our, our events. So if we open up this, if I actually, if I hover over every one of these little dots, you're going to see all of the things that this ETL layer is gonna be outputting. So if I double click on it, open its subflow template. So a claim, so here's, you know, we got a claim, it's coming in as a text file, anonymous shipments, they give us anonymous data. And then, so that, that's the data file that comes in. So this is a node in node red, they can do things. Like one can be a file that reads a file. And there's another node called a CSV parser. And here's a CSV parser, and it tells you how to parse all that data. And then I could write a function. So here I'm inserting Python code. This is an example, I'm not using our real stuff to keep it a little bit more confidential, but this is just an example of code off the Kraken site. So you can run Python here. You could put JavaScript in here. There's different types of nodes that allow you to write functions in different ways. Um, so there's it, a huge amount of power in being able to combine this set of tools together. Um, to be able to build causal diagrams, knowledge diagrams, and um, Grack, not Gracken, but type DB and uh, Vatical. So I'm gonna jump back to the PowerPoint for one second, just to kind of give you a feel for the stack architecture we're calling it. So the front end dashboard, we we're thinking Graf uh, Grafana right now, that may change based on the customer, uh, based on what they wanna do, it could be uh, uh, Azure using their um, the, the business, I can't remember the name of it, but basically their business workflow solution building tools that they have out there on Azure right now. Um, Node Red being this low code programming environment. Everything's low code now. You're basically getting super smart people from like, like this conference, for example, a bunch of really smart uh, computational biologists that understand their domain really well. They understand why things happen. So getting a group of people like that participating in artificial intelligence is huge because it's not the data scientists, I don't think that are gonna solve the hardest problems we're facing today. It's the people that are already experts in their domain and have appropriate tools to allow them to be able to build some of these solutions. So it kind of has to be low code. Like my experience at Chevron and you know, we I did work, actually the cool thing when I joined the other company, I got to see how Aramco and Shell and all these other big companies do their oil and gas stuff. 
there's a lot of very similar things and a lot of really brilliant people that don't understand how to code. So if we can work with them or at least provide tools to them that can allow them to use these low, low code programming environments, it, it brings them more into the game. And really this is how we solve these problems. Causality, I think SMEs are extremely important to causality because we've done some projects where we've done one project specifically, I won't say any names, but we gave some work to a group of data scientists and they really just come back with a bunch of analysis on how data is correlated to each other. Not really understanding that, like if you look at shipments, for example, and you start seeing shipments drop off, if you use shipments in your model, your model is being trained on the effect of something else happening because shipments change based on, let's say you, you deliver a package 10 times in a row to the wrong address. There's a very good chance that customer is probably going to leave you. So just seeing their shipment level going down, that's not the cause of them leaving. That's an effect of something else going on in the system that's causing this to happen. So what we're doing at Geminos is we're bringing the causal thinking back to data science or maybe in reintroducing it through the perspective of uh, Pearl and his thinking around causation. Um, we're also looking at how we can implement um, the actual do calculus on the graph. And there's tools out there already. So even some open source ones that we think we can integrate, we may need to write some of it ourselves. We're not sure yet. Um, I should also say we're a small company. There's just a few of us, um, myself, uh, Stuart Frost, uh, you know, Stuart's background is, I think he's raised over $300 million. He's had 31 startups, sold one of them to Microsoft. Like this is one of those people that knows how to build technology companies. And one of them was a modeling company. So that's why I got involved because somebody knows what they're doing. Um, and then we got Jerry, who's like this rock star, open. Um, he basically knows everything about open source um, and what are the best tools to use. And you know, he's the one that finds all these great technologies and understands how they all work and how they can fit together. Um, yeah, and we've got like just a really good team. We got Yash and Owen and like great developers, uh, Julie. So a really nice, solid team of people trying to figure out how we can improve our ability to come up with better AI solutions. We're probably not going to solve general artificial intelligence. That's a bit much, but we do think, and I believe within, within companies, I think we can use a narrow approach. We can solve artificial narrow intelligence, not general everything, but we can build solutions that are causal in nature that help inform why there's problems. I think there's a, now our, our backgrounds aren't biomedicine. Um, we've done some work, some of our people have done work in that area, but like this is a natural fit for biomedicine. It's a natural fit for logistics with COVID. There's so much happening with COVID. So many models broke. Um, I think just because the patterns all changed. So um, yeah, so that, that's kind of where we are with it. Um, what else did I want to say at the end here? The AI tooling, like we can integrate PyTorch, Tensor, like anything that can be a node can fit into this. Um, like I said, we've built out some nodes in Node Red that can do this. It's not already yet. We're in the process of building this whole thing and figuring out exactly how we're going to bring it to market. We don't completely have that sorted out, but that's uh, that's the direction we're heading. So if you want to learn more, um, we, we're posting now. We're, we, we're kind of been in not stealth mode, but we've been quiet but we've started posting on blogs. So we have a causality blog that Stuart's writing that really outlines this process. Our website, geminos.ai. You wanna reach out, either email any one of us, but probably info at geminos.ai. Not a huge company, so we'll, it'll get, get to the appropriate person quite easily. Um, I don't know if questions are gonna work. Jerry's online probably answering them. I wasn't, wasn't brave enough to bring up two systems at once, so I just used one, um, but yeah. Check us out. We're, we're doing some really cool stuff and we're looking to work with, with anybody with interesting hard problems that, that, that fit into what we're trying to do. Thank you very much. And I'll uh, hopefully see you all at some point in the near future in a bar somewhere. Bye-bye. <laughs>